Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, guys. You've got Bert backwards hat, McGee over there. You rolling with Lanny, the Dividend Diplomats, guys. And a little bit of doom and gloom today, talking about Intel stock, ticker symbol is INTC. Before you, we talk about Intel, you know what you got to do. Subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. You guys should have known it. We're going to mean business in this video. The hat is backwards. That means we're not messing around here, everybody. We have some serious business to talk about with Intel after their recent earnings release, the market's reaction to it, and just some general thoughts that we want to give about this massive semiconductor company. Yeah, exactly, guys. So Intel, if you, in case you haven't heard the news, they released earnings, you know, come Thursday night of uh, January 26th, I believe they released it. And um, let's just say that, you know, revenue earnings missed a bunch of expectations from Wall Street, um, stock price tumbled down to as low as $26.78, which, you know, previous close before that, they were set nice and bright and mighty over $30. So we're talking pretty much a 10% shock to the system downward. Um, yeah. Guys, they dipped, you know, dipped below yeah. 27. And, uh, you know, right. the earnings release had a lot in there. The CEO had a lot to say, you know, on Wall Street, on CNBC, you name it. He was on every channel. Yeah. I think what's fascinating about this is the market absolutely punished Intel. But I think let's take a step back here for a second of what was going on with Intel. I guess I have a couple, like, it's not that I'm concerned that their stock price was getting punished because that doesn't surprise me one bit. It, it absolutely should have been punished. But in September, and even as early as, like, as recent as December, it was trading below $26 per share, $27 per share. It wasn't until the middle of January where the stock price really shot up to over $30 per share. So now, Intel's back at the time of this video at 28.16, which is still above some of those 52-week lows that Intel was at. So I guess it's just kind of a confusing question. I think, Andy, I'd love to hear your perspective on this. Is like, what was everybody expecting in this earnings release? Yeah, guys, let's talk about Intel right now, about what Bert's saying is, what were your expectations? Were, that, were your expecta expectations that they were going to have a blowout first quarter of, or a fourth quarter of 2022? Do you think they were actually finishing off with a bang here? Yeah. Um, it seemed like expectations were almost a little too lofty, a little too high, um, especially after, you know, I know Intel may have made a mention that they, they're kind of near the bottom, at the bottom. I know that they kind of hinted at that, um, but my expectations were already at the floor and yeah. nothing surprised me from the release. If anything, I have expectations for, not even in the third quarter of 23, but first quarter of 24. And I think we even on this channel have always said, you got to get through a rough 23, maybe even a rough 24 as well. Yeah, we've said this sector and specifically Intel is going to take a long-term play and it's going to take a big stomach for some of the stuff that's coming out with Intel. And to your point, what were you expecting investors? I'd be curious, like what signs did you see that were pointing towards a strong fourth quarter from Intel because we weren't expecting it. If anything, we thought it was kind of funny that they were above $30 per share for a period of time because we couldn't figure out what exactly was hinting for that large of a rally from $25 to $30 a share with no news coming out for Intel. Exactly. So guys, just about three months ago, again, they were trading at $25 a share back in October. They're still trading 10% above that. And you know why? Shouldn't they be at 25 or below? Yeah. Um, so there might be some, still some uh, expectations built in that they're actually a better company than what is currently, you know, showing on their performance right now. Yeah. So let's look at some positive news because we talked some negative. Let's share some positive. Let's check out the balance sheet with Intel because one thing to keep an eye on if a company's struggling is just keep a look at the balance sheet. Is debt climbing? Is cash going down? Are they running into potential liquidity stuff? That those are all signs to look at for companies to see how bad is the news that you're facing. Let's start with cash, the first line on the balance sheet. Still have $11 billion of cash on hand, a small amount of change. Lanny's like, forget about it over here. We got all this cash, you know, a lot of yeah. money still. So they're liquid. And as proven with the current and the quick ratio, which measure your short, your ability to cover your short-term liabilities with slight differences between the two, 
We want to see 1x. That means assets cover liabilities in the short term. Current ratio, 1.56x. So easily above that mark, back out the inventory with the quick ratio, 1.16x. So both of them are exceeding the 1x mark that you're looking at. So some balance sheet metrics, not terrible. Some pretty thing, things that we would see in different companies, like we like those metrics. Those are fantastic. Yeah. No, I mean, it really solid. You're taking out, you look at the quick ratio and you take out all that inventory, all that chip inventory, right? They're still over 1.1x when you remove that from the current yeah. assets. So they're still able, even without being able to turn over the product that they have to pay their current obligations. And I think the CEO also said they're still working through getting getting that inventory cleared out, getting it shipped out. They have, a, I think, a pretty big pipeline of orders that they're getting ready to deploy. So I think that there should be still some room for improvement here on that. Now, Bert, you know, I know expectations going forward. I think they were saying around 10 to 11 billion of revenue, you know, per quarter right now. I know revenue was down in the fourth quarter to 14 billion. But tell me some positive signs about what you saw in the revenue area for Intel. So the revenue was still $14 billion. So they were still bringing in top line revenue there. So not bad, right? Not bad. You look, take a little bit deeper of a dive into the earnings release. Look at some of the sub businesses here that fold up into the overall revenue line. Foundry business is up 30%. It's almost a billion dollars of year to date revenue. The mobile eye is up 35% too, almost $2 billion of year to date revenue. So they're starting to get revenue from other sources. They're seeing income grow in other sectors that will hopefully translate to a long-term play for Intel and keep things going in the long-term. Got to start a business somewhere. You, When you spin up a division, you're not going to magically have a hundred billion of sales. You've got to start somewhere, everybody. So seeing two newer units to start seeing revenue increase is a great sign to help them diversify in the future. Yeah. And I mean, we all knew that the computing and the client computing was going to be down ship shortages, not getting product out to their client base, building a multi-billion dollar facility, mm -hmm. facilities in Ohio, oh not yet completed yet. So you knew that that's going, that's going to continue to decline. And you know that it's going to also just continue to decline because of the direction of the industry. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And I think they have an eight to 10, eight to $10 billion cost cutting strategy um, you know, over the next three years, 23 through 25. And I think they're aiming to get up to 3 billion in cost savings this year alone. So expect more, you know, possibly layoffs, expect more divisions to be consolidated as they work to save money. Right. So now that we've gone through the earnings release, we've kind of given our thoughts on it. Let's, have, let's run them through our stock screener because, yeah, in the goal of the stock screener to see, are they an undervalued stock to buy today? That's the goal. We use the three metrics, the PE ratio less than the S&P 500, payout ratio less than 60%, history of increasing dividends, and then we throw in the bonus metric, the dividend yield. So let's jump right in. As of the time of this video, close price of January 27th, price 28.16, forward EPS $1.77, price to earnings ratio 15.91. Yeah, a little bit higher now for Intel. You know, analysts are building in new expectations for 23, really dogging it. You know, 16 PE, not low, not high. Okay. Yeah. Let's look at that dividend payout ratio, that second metric. You know, they pay 36 and a half cents. And yes, the president and CEO said we are committed to the dividend. They're going to continue with the dividend and they want to still be a big dividend player and payer for that matter. So based on that, Dividend payout ratio is at 69%. Yes, it's on the high side. Yes, it's over 60%. They said they were committed to it. Operating cash flows still show that they can support it. Um, so keep an eye on it. Yeah. Worth monitoring. That's all we can really say right now. You've got to keep an eye on it. Well, let's move into the third metric because there's a piece of that that we want to make sure we say after that. Piece of the buy there. Yeah, five-year dividend growth rate, 6.29%. They've increased the dividend for eight plus years. The caveat of what we were going to say is we're not expecting dividend growth anytime soon. Most likely for Intel, I would be shocked if the company increases its dividend after everything that's coming out. But guess what? We've also been saying that for three months. We've been saying it's going to be tough sledding for Intel to keep increasing its dividend. So it's not a surprise for us that we don't think an increase is going to be on the table. In this so, year. you know, I think you got to keep in mind that they can keep their growth streak alive by not even 
announcing an increase this year because they announced it last year. So getting that first quarter in this year versus higher than last year, they already grew. Their dividend is going to show growth from 23 to 22. So they actually have multiple quarters. They have until the third quarter of next year, because if they have an increase to that fourth quarter of 24 dividend, they'll keep the streak alive. So as Bert said, don't be surprised if you can go six to seven quarters without an announcement. Nothing like a good old fashioned loophole for some of these dividends. Exxon Mobil yes. <laughs> All right. So what's the yield? That's the big ticket item. After the price drop, yeah, the yield is 4.33%. So, hey, you're getting paid to wait. It's a yield of 4% for a tech stock. It's pretty good. It's still lower though. Remember, Intel was at $25 per share. Their yield was close to 5% and not too long ago. So their yield's actually lower because their prices climb still when you're looking at Intel compared to three months ago. So guys, stock is down obviously 41% from last year. Stock is still up year to date by over 5%. They're 116 bill by market cap. So we're going to show the stock screener metrics right here on the screen. We won't go back through them. Obviously, the CEO is still committed to the dividend. Now, the question is, you know, we put out even a Twitter poll on this of when would you even consider buying Twitter stock? We've got, you know, we just put it out today. So we've only got around 60 votes in. And Bert, what kind of, what does that look like right now? All right. So we gave four options here. Um, what price would you be willing to buy Intel? Current price, 2816, 7.4% of you said you would buy Intel here. Less than $27 per share, 13.6. Less than $25 per share, 43.2%. The last option was never not touching Intel. That's 35% of the people on our Twitter following. So most half under 25 would buy. Yeah. And I think that's a fair benchmark here. That's probably where I'm looking as a point for for Intel in the short term. I don't, I, I'm not running to buy Intel, not running to keep building my position, but if it gets in the 25s range, I'm definitely going to start adding up a share, two, three, four, maybe five. Hey, throw out a cool hundred dollars on them. So guys, I'm currently dripping my shares. Bert's currently dripping shares. We're looking at under 25 to maybe consider adding monitor the dividend, monitor the earnings results, look at the balance sheet over the next few quarters to see how they shape their balance sheet for the future. Bert, any other parting words for the community right here? Just remember, subscribe to our channel, give the video a thumbs up, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, you know where to find us. We're always talking dividend stocks and sharing just some fun anecdotes. I know Lanny's had a few fun ones about Intel too over the last, uh, the last few days. And everybody, there's one more thing we got to say as we do in every video. If you're not with us, you're against us, baby. Guys, that was Bert the Hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out.